Okay, so we heard uh, that there's a lot of, well, there's been like a lot of hype, marketing hype for um, uh, Assassin's Creed Discovery Tour. Although I am not a big fan of Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, giving it a pretty low score. Uh, only story-wise, I mean, like I haven't really seen the um, immersiveness. I'm I'm not really a big fan of immersiveness. I'm more into story, so that's why I gave it such a low score. But um, yeah, we're we're going to check out the uh, discovery tour that they were talking about where uh, they developed this uh, this program actually for students who are uh, history majors I suppose and like you can you can tour uh, ancient uh, civilization times see what's going on so that's what we are doing right now we're just gonna do maybe a couple um, decided to call this one a first impressions i was talking to vish about this last night and he's like it's not really a gameplay review because you're not really in-depth reviewing the game because you haven't played it that much it's more of like your first impressions of the game so um taking it back my first impression of assassin's creed origins was um was a three or four out of five uh three or four out of ten sorry uh pretty low score only because i like stories and uh the story on this one seemed a bit odd like it didn't really t tell you anything about what was going on so you're kind of lost and uh, he said the title card didn't come in until like an hour and a half later so that's not cool I, I don't like that but he's he's fully playing it so you can check him out on twitch and uh follow the story along there but for now we're going to check out the discovery tour okay boom estimated time six minutes let's do it welcome to alexandria planning of this alexander's oh. plan to build his great city began with a verse from Homer's Odyssey. There is, in front of Egypt, in the sea with many swells, an island called Pharos. Guided by these clues, Alexander the Great founded his future city at the western end of the Nile Delta. Okay, that's kind of cool. No more info. Nice. Uh... Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This is, uh, this is a lot. We're not going to read that. We're just going to see what the city's like. Though Alexander considered this location ideal for his great city, it presented considerable challenges. Too difficult to access during storms, the surrounding swamps threatened disease, and the limestone soil prevented the growth of healthy crops. However, okay, due to the influence I mean, it's a bit of his long. mentor Aristotle, Alexander the Great recognized. Oh, it's just gonna keep going. The great excavations led by Mahmud Bey Al Falaki in the 19th century revealed that the these formidable ancient walls would resist a number of attacks, including fending off the king of Syria in 169 BCE. It wasn't until 295 CE that they eventually fell to Roman Emperor Diocletian, and this only oh. after eight months of relentless assault. That's kind of cool. Okay, so it just allows... So apparently what I'm gathering is you follow this path and then you uh, get a history lesson. Alexandria's principal architect, Dinocrates, chose a Hippodamian grid plan. The grid maximized functionality with wide straight roads and canals running beneath them. Alexander reckoned hmm. Okay. A central core so that's kind of annoying actually. North that Alexandria was most likely built upon an already existing Egyptian village. Makes sense. Upon its completion, the Egyptians reviled the city, refusing to call it by its founder's name. Funny. Instead, they called it Raked, the building as a mark of disdain, which was later Hellenized into Rakotis. Despite this, the name Alexandria would remain. Oh. Okay. Welcome to Discovery Tour by Assassin's Creed. Oh, I see. Okay, so what I'm gathering is that um, this game, this like little segment is uh, it's literally like a lesson. Uh, well, they did say that in the trailer, so like they developed it for university students. So it makes sense that like you would, um, it would just be a tour and it would just be like lectures. I find that a little boring, but we'll see. Like, I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's also kind of boring. Uh, just I don't like the way it is. It should be like, I don't know. 
Maybe it's the voice that I don't like. We'll, we'll, we'll play a couple more and we'll see, uh, we'll see what we like about, oh, well, our first impression of this is, um, yeah, let's go, where do we want to go, Egypt, 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 hmm, deserts of Egypt, no, what am I feeling, what am I feeling, uh, Flora, hmm, probably, ooh, that's kind of cool, Gladiator Arena, wait, is that Greece? Past travel of these stations. Mm. Okay, uh, while I've been here, I've went. I've been to the um, here in real life. So let's see if it holds up. Wait, what? What's going on, guys? Five stations. All right, has work. Okay. So we, if all right, so we want to do. Glad you arena, fast travel. Oh, okay, fast travel. That's where it's at. Okay, so you can read about it or do the fast travel. That's what I'm gathering. Da -da. Okay, loading screen first. Uh, old is recorded. Uh, uh, first roll of ages, trans. Okay. Alexander's tomb was never found. Hmm, like a bit of ancient Alexandria. That makes sense. Uh, has it always been there? Tab X. Oh, cool. Smart. Uh, okay. Boom. Alright. Awesome. Alright. Let's see what this is like. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, my books, uh, my books that I got there did talk about it looking like this. I heard it had gold, though. Start tour. Three-minute tour. All Welcome right. to the Gladiator Arena. It's kind of cool. Oh, is that the Roman Forum? Yes, it is. I've been there. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's see what's going on. While gladiators would not perform in Cyrene, until later in the Roman era, the team decided to include a gladiatorial arena for two reasons. First, they believed it was important to portray this aspect of Roman life. Huh. And second, okay. they felt it would add interesting gameplay possibilities. Oh, that's cool. The first gladiators to enter the arena were prisoners of war. It was a spectacle of violent clashes between men and against wild beasts mm -hmm. that lasted nearly a thousand years. Oh, I also heard that uh, they were ugly, the gladiators. They didn't look like Russell Crowe. That was the joke she said. Eventually, volunteers began to enter the ring. Yeah. For status and money, many of the more skilled combatants increased the Ooh. quality of the entertainment. Wrestling. Thus, the profession of gladiator came to be. Bound by cool. contract to the master of the gladiators, the fighters were fed, trained, and guarded in barracks. It's kind of like uh, the UFC today. <laughs> gladiators were separated into heavy and light armored fighters, each with their own set of specific armor and weapons. Organizers often had two audience favored factions well, face careful. each other in that combat. Makes sense. That makes sense that they'd have uh, these shopkeepers out here. They also, in one of my books, it said that there's like a canopy over here. I wonder if they're going to show that. It's kind of cool. The events were highly organized. Oh, sick. Fights were held with a background of music and supervised by a referee. Death, either in the course of combat or by decision, was not always the only way out for the loser. Several were released due to their performance and gained great notoriety as celebrities. Yeah, I heard that as a misconception. Tour complete. Uh, before we move on, let's see if we can get to the very top. That'd be kind of cool.
Oh, alright. Apparently we can't go to the very top. Oh, maybe we can. Oh, no we can't. Okay, so apparently we can't get to the very top. That's a little lame. Sprint, sprint, sprint. Come on. Get to the top somewhere. Okay, well, guess not. Okay, let's see. Tours characters. What? Oh, we can switch who we want to be. That's kind of cool. Oh, Julius Caesar. Oh, uh, William Miles. Ooh, Pharaoh. Um, wow, this, this is kind of cool. So you can select who you want to play as. Um, in the game, like your skins. We'll be, hmm, we'll be Sua, Julius Caesar, what does he look like? Huh, interesting. Cleopatra look like this, eh? Interesting. Okay, we'll be this guy. Oh, okay, let's do another tour. Okay, uh, okay, let's try, oh, pyramids, there we go. Let's look for this. Origin of the pyramid, nice. They don't actually know what the origin is, but um, pyramid, mm, red pyramid, red pyramid. Okay, so okay, cool. This is cool. Okay, so we'll try. We'll start off with the origin of the pyramid. Um, whoops. I did this fast travel. So this is the main character of the game. Looks pretty intense. Yeah. Da -da, da -da. Oh, that's fancy. Okay, here we go. Boom! Pyramid time. Start my tour. Welcome to the origin of the pyramid. Wow, that's what it looks like. I've never been to Egypt. The I really want to go. The origin of the word pyramid is controversial. Most believe that it originates with the Greek word pyramides, which referred to a bread of conical shape. Hmm. Life and death in ancient Egypt were modeled on the cycle of the sun. The perfect shape of the smooth-faced pyramid became associated with the metaphor of the pharaoh transformed into one of the sun's rays in death. Pyramids represented the Benben, -Ben, the primordial mound of the Heliopolitan creation myth. These stories permeated every aspect of Egyptian life huh. to a greater or lesser extent. So they're based off the creation myth. All right, so that's why... During the so pre-dynastic period, the development of funerary practices was different depending on whether one was located in Lower Egypt or Upper Egypt. Well before the pyramid, there was the burial pits. It is on the site of Marimde Beni Salome in Lower Egypt that we find the oldest funerary site, dating back to 5000 BCE. Study of the tombs revealed that the bodies of the deceased were deposited in a shallow grave, in a fetal position. Though a few objects were recovered from these graves, they offered no insight as to the social class of those interred within. Hmm. All right. In Upper Egypt, pre-dynastic practices are easier to study, but reveal more complex funerary rites. They are divided into two cultures. Mm, don't really care about the funerals. During the three Nagata periods, ranging from 4000 BCE to 3510 BCE, funerary practices evolved. Wow, in it's all about funerals. The shape of tombs changed from... Okay, nobody cares about the funeral. The term mastaba, meaning massive bench in dialectal Arabic, refers to a form of funerary architecture that was present in Egypt from the archaic period. So it's all about the funeral the then, huh? The arrangement of the substructure of the mastaba evolved during the course of the Old Kingdom. From the 5th dynasty onwards... 
The sixth dynasty would see art used to its utmost. The entire surface of a mastaba would be covered in scenes of daily life, illustrating the prosperity of those lucky enough to comfortably spend eternity near the pyramid of a pharaoh. That's kind of cool. The best example of this type of mastaba is the tomb of Mararuka in Saqqara. Cool. Um, yeah, so I like how they, they made the, the pyramids old already because like, even though it's like Egyptian time, because they do believe that the pyramids are much older um, than people like modern contemporary scientists believe. Uh, if you check out Graham Hancock, he's all about that. Uh, he believes that we, we've we actually had multiple ancient civilizations in the past. Um, like great, great engineers. Three things are necessary uh, when exploring Egypt. Water, a good camera, and an omnipresent voice coming from nowhere. Yeah, so he believes that uh, we've had massive uh, cataclysms. And... Uh, We've had to do this over and over again, and one of the oldest things that's remnant from that time is the pyramids. But it doesn't seem like there's too much going on over here. Uh, let's see. Seems like a very like shallow overview, you know what I mean? I guess if you like watch all of them, maybe it would um, be good, but like, there's nothing like insane, insane going on uh, rediscovering Egypt learn about the modern hmm no fauna and ancient it's kind of cool John Francis uh, temple of Zeus oh that's cool temple of Zeus oops uh, and oh over to Giza this one looks cool. Riddles of the Sphinx. Ooh, I'll check that one out after. They believe that that one's super old because it's got uh, watermarks on it. Apparently, uh, John Anthony West's Magical Egypt is really good. Never seen it, but it's talked highly about. So, if you want to do more research into this. Although, it's also like argued about by uh, modern historians, Egyptologists. Say he doesn't know he's talking about. Welcome to an overview of the Giza necropolis. The Giza plateau is located on the west bank of the Nile and was considered by ancient Egyptians as the domain of the dead. Kind of cool. The pyramidal complexes found there were built over the span of three generations during the reign of Khufu, Khafre, and Menkara. It's kind of cool. The Giza area, now famous for its three pyramids, is part of a wider grouping of funerary complexes. Rulers from this period generally elected to be buried in the area. The focal point of the entire region was the city of Memphis chosen as the capital of Egypt at the beginning of the Old Kingdom. So it's all just tombs. So you got Sphinx. One, two, and three. Interesting. Hmm. It's kind of cool. The placement of the Giza monuments, and particularly that of the pyramids, followed a practical yet strict alignment. First, they focused on cardinal points, and then they accounted for the- Take your time. Oh, oh. wait. It's not like ancient Egypt is going anywhere. Wait, what the hell? What was that? Man. That's kind of cool, though. It looks all right. All right, let's just check out what's up with that Sphinx, because that, um, so I guess, like, I shouldn't venture too far off. Secrets of the Great Pyramid. What? And glass workers of the world. Oh, I didn't know that. Leading glass workers. Torchlight. Yeah. True or false? Uh, I don't know. Oh, meteorite. Really? Huh. That's kind of cool. Is apparently that's what's Mecca. What's in Mecca, right? There's like a meteorite. Start to work. 
Welcome to the... A Sphinx was originally meant to be a personification of the king. The human head, wearing pharaonic regalia, was fused with the body of a lion, thus sharing the qualities the powerful animal possessed. Hmm. Namely, its power, the swiftness of its attack, and its majestic authority. By these very virtues, it was also considered a symbol of protection. Unsurprisingly, statues of sphinxes could be found along the Dromas, protectors of the path taken by the gods to reach the temples. Hmm, cool. So, um, that was the uh, modern contemporary viewpoint, but they believe that um, the face was actually carved later on uh, when they predate the stones. So it's like the Egyptians could have came upon this and been like, well, it, it would have been a lion before and then they carved in the pharaoh's face because he wanted it to be made. Allegedly. Over the centuries, enthusiasts and historians alike have wondered who built the Sphinx? For what purpose? And who does it represent? These questions remain unanswered. Several theories do exist, however, some more credible than others. One theory supposes that Jedifre chose to pay homage to his father Khufu by building the Great Sphinx of Giza. Hmm. The stone temple on the... Nah, it's boring. Another theory suggests that the Sphinx was built by Khafre and was meant to represent him. Assumptions. While ancient Egypt as a whole leaves a rather monochrome vision of its monuments and statuary, it is vital to understand that in ancient times, absolutely everything was painted. Huh. The sun Makes sense. eating away at the pigments of the colors, the sand, the climate, and the implacable impact of time unfortunately destroyed the glorious colors of the Sphinx of Giza. That makes sense. Documents from an Arab Egyptologist of the 12th century Abd al-Latif al-Baghdadi indicate that traces of red were still visible in his time. Today, however, the only color that remains are traces of red close to the ears of the Sphinx, as well as hints of blue and yellow on the neems, traditional colors for that type of headdress. That makes sense. The pigments for the... Red had a strong symbolism in ancient Egypt. It was both the color of life and the color of death. Hmm. It could represent the sands of the desert or the brilliance. That makes sense. Blood. Blood, yeah. Dating from the 4th dynasty, approximately 2600 to 2500 BCE, the Great Sphinx of Giza is the oldest and largest sphinx that we know of. Okay. In order to bring polish to the imposing monument, several blocks of limestone were added after the initial construction phase. Since then, there have been numerous attempts at preservation. Okay. The Sphinx as a whole was carved in situ from a natural stone promontory. Okay. The natural bedrock is seen through the oblique natural strata of the Sphinx. Wow, this is body. really intense. Since antiquity, people have always believed there was a hidden tomb deep within the Sphinx. It is thought that attempts to plunder the Sphinx began as far back as the first intermediate period. Since then, numerous attempts to pierce the Sphinx's secrets have been carried out, leaving indelible scars upon the monument. Makes sense. Twelve Ooh, meters entrance. long and cut during pharaonic times, another entrance in the back of the Sphinx aroused curiosity. Although Thutmose IV attempted to seal it off, it was possibly reopened by treasure hunters. It was rediscovered by Howard Vise and mapped more recently by Mark Lehner. This entrance at the back of the Sphinx leads to different cavities of a few meters each, in directions going inside the statue's body and under the surface. The team has used this opportunity to extrapolate a little more. That's kind of cool. Okay, yeah, how do we get out? How do I drop that? There you go. That was a kind of cool one. I think I might be over this, uh, the Sphinx one. While there have been no major discoveries pertaining to the Sphinx of Giza in recent years, theories and hypotheses continue to emerge. 
Without validation provided by archaeological sources, however, they remain unsubstantiated. Makes sense. Okay, I'm over this one. Um, thanks. Um, secrets. That's kind of cool. Upper chambers. Mm. All right, let's check out the secrets. Hopefully it's not like, uh, yes, I want to quit. Hopefully it's not like that one. So it's pretty, um, it's a little dry, I'd say. Like the, the things that they tell you, it's a little dry. I mean, it would, instead of like, um, like reading in a book or studying it, I guess it'd be kind of cool to like, just do this for your class. Welcome to Secrets of Built around 2550 BCE, the Great Pyramid of Giza is considered one of the most iconic structures of Egypt. It is the biggest of the pyramids and the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world still standing. Hmm. The construction of the Great Pyramid was also a display of power and opulence on the part of Khufu. Oh, well, it is part of the Pharaoh's vast funerary complex, which also includes two temples, three satellite pyramids, a causeway, and a builder's necropolis. It's kind of cool. New insights into engineering and ancient Egyptian culture are still being revealed over 4,500 years later. It is interesting to note that by Cleopatra's time, the pyramid's celestial purpose, its construction, and the function of its mysterious inner chambers was already unclear. Oh, that's interesting. The Egyptians had polished their design for centuries by the time work on the Great Pyramid began. Intended as a tomb for Khufu, the Great Pyramid's structural design has been considered to be nearly perfect by engineers and historians ever since. Hmm. Precisely oriented north-south to the four cardinal points of a compass, the length of each side of the Great Pyramid at its base was 230 meters and its original height was 147 meters. Why? The pyramid is a mere 0.05% error away from being a perfect square. In order to achieve the shape of a true pyramid, the design required many considerations in the planning phases as well as precision during execution. It was especially critical that they can yeah, it's kind of boring. Materials for the Great Pyramid consisted of quarried limestone blocks, weighing between 2 to 15 tons each. Yep. It's estimated that it took between 600,000 and 2 million blocks of stone to build the Great Pyramid. Experts calculate it would have required men to move 12 blocks every hour around the clock for 20 years to place the 2.3 million wow. stones the monument is made of. But did they really do it? Okay, I'm done with that one. Wow, yeah, he's a little dry. Just saying, it's a little dry. Alexandria. Let's see if the three pharaohs. Mm, Siege of Alexandria. Okay, that's kind of cool from Julius Caesar's perspective. Uh, okay, let's check out this one. Oops. Yeah. Yes. Just a couple more. I think we get the gist of it. It's uh, it's a very educational piece. Um, yeah. It's pretty heavy on the uh, lecturing. Again, makes sense because it was made for university students. Um, to give a little bit of backstory. Uh, yeah. I guess it'd be kind of cool if you just want to like run around and stuff. Oh, cool. Take a photo. How does that work? I've been trying. No, it doesn't work. Okay. Start my tour. Welcome to the Siege of Alexandria. So how did we get sieged? Among the collection of writings attributed to Julius Caesar are his descriptions of the Siege of Alexandria, the Gallic hmm. Wars, and the commentaries on the Civil War. These archives contain information on different campaigns, the wars of Alexandria, Africa, and Spain. 
Each of them recounts Caesar's military activity from 58 BCE to 45 BCE. Okay, so we have historical evidence the that there was a war. The of Alexandria closely relays the events of the Civil War that led up to the event and describes how Caesar was besieged in the palace of the Ptolemies. Other ancient... Okay, so it took a... It was a civil war in that started... In the events leading up to the siege of Alexandria, and siege. Cleopatra VII and her brother were fighting over control of Egypt. Young King Ptolemy XIII's regent, Pothinus, had firm control over the young pharaoh, and an outmaneuvered Cleopatra soon went into hiding. Okay, so it was... Upon um, his arrival in relationship Alexandria, problems. Caesar was presented with Pompey's head. The sight of a Roman murdered by Egyptians did not sit well with him. Caesar made his displeasure clear, ordering the return of Cleopatra, and for the siblings to resolve their differences and resume their co-rule of Egypt, as per the will of their father. Neither Pothinus nor Ptolemy XIII wished to accede to this demand. While doing his best to aggravate Caesar, Pothinus secretly plotted against the Roman ruler and sent word for Egyptian general Achilles to bring his 20,000 men to fight on his behalf. Achilles like While Achilles? While Pothinus plotted against Caesar, Cleopatra made a bold move. Oh snap, made that bold move. It is kind of interesting, like seeing the whole town thing. This is more interesting than the pyramids. They didn't really give you anything about the pyramids, so I was like, mm, dry. Oh, sphinxes. That's cool. I think that's more of like artistic liberty right there. I don't think it's actually, they actually had those. They might have, but yeah. Okay, where's the next one? Jeez. Oh, they just really want you to see the city. Okay, guards. That's kind of cool. Okay. Okay, so we got some guards. They seem really nice, you know. Wow. Okay. There's a guard right here. Holy. Probably have to kill him in the game. There you go. There are various descriptions oh, of the sick. encounter between Caesar and Cleopatra. One report states that she snuck into the palace alone at night. Another account claims she was accompanied by an ally and was brought inside the palace wrapped in a carpet bag. Though exactly what happened at this fateful meeting is up for debate, what is known is that Cleopatra met with Caesar and earned his approval. Pothinus and Ptolemy the Thirteenth were most vexed with this turn of events. Oh, they were most vexed. What if she suffocated in the carpet? That would be nuts. I think we get the gist of this one too. Also, it was, uh, it was all about relationships that really killed it. Greed. Deceit. Lack of trust. All the exact same um, themes that play out today. Alright, what's this? With Cleopatra finally present, Caesar chose to act as mediator between the siblings in the hopes of a peaceful resolution. Oh. It did not take long for things to sour. During a banquet given to celebrate the reconciliation, there was an assassination attempt on Caesar. Oh. It was the Roman leader's own barber who thwarted the attack. Once it was revealed Barber. that the wow. king's regent, Pothinus, had ordered the attack, Caesar had him executed. He then placed the young king under guard. Huh. Okay. That's kind of cool. Apparently, uh, Caesar came from the ghettos as well. Not the ghettos, but like, not from the rich elite. So he understood the plights of the people, and that's what made him so popular with uh, the Romans at that time. This is actually kind of getting interesting now. Get a little, uh, get a little crazy story going on. So funny to think that, like, all of this, although it, like, was thousands of years ago, it's very similar to what we're doing today, you know? Nothing's really changed in terms of uh, human behavior. The palace with roughly 4,000 troops, and with the knowledge that the arrival of enemy forces was imminent, Caesar sent for help from Syria, Rhodes, and Cilicia. 
He hmm. ordered his men to dig a ditch around the palace and build a wall leading to the harbor. This would ensure Caesar's access to the sea. Ooh. When Egyptian general Achilles arrived in the city with 20,000 men, the battle for Alexandria began. It's kind of cool. With so few men at his disposal, Caesar could not risk a battle just yet. He sent ambassadors to Achilles in the name of Ptolemy to propose a truce. Achilles or Achilles? Knowing that the orders did not come from the young king and angered by the pharaoh's imprisonment, Achilles had the messengers assassinated. Oh. With Caesar confined within the palace, Achilles positioned his troops around the city. Skirmishes broke out throughout the streets of Alexandria and went on for several days and nights. Though they were outnumbered, Caesar's men were able to hold the enemy back. This prompted Achilles' next move capture the Roman fleet stationed in the harbor. Honestly, this is really just showing you that like we really haven't changed as a species. Like I'm sure during this time, like well this is the same time that like philosophers like uh uh you know Plato and stuff were around so it's like we've always had people who are free thinking and, and trying to push for social change and then we always have these like powerful people who are actually in charge, you know? And like you know, if, if it hasn't changed in like 4,000 years, or no, longer actually, not more than 4,000, um, how's it gonna change yeah. now? We're just exercising human behavior with new technology at our disposal. That's all. Although the palace offered protection, losing the port meant the end of help and supplies. Dang, they burned it. Caesar knew he had to protect the fleet. This is a really good military strategy. While he and his um, troops episode. succeeded in regaining control of the port, I like it. he knew it would be impossible to sustain. Caesar ordered the burning of the ships. With passage back to the palace closed off, he headed for the lighthouse of Alexandria. Yeah, cut off their supply. I like how it's like actually just business deals. Like this is a total like economics and stuff going on right now like economic warfare fighting their way through the egyptian troops caesar and his men eventually reached ferris island there oh whoops Whatever. the exact chronology of events during the war in alexandria remain imprecise conflicting accounts raise questions as to when and even if the great library of alexandria was burned down at all Ooh. one account states that during the fighting Docks and warehouses were burned, and this was the fire that spread to the library. Oh, In another account, when Achilles cut off the harbor, Caesar had to leave the safety of the palace to defend his ships. As the enemies battled across the port, their arsenals set ships ablaze, and this destruction spread to the library. Oh, that's interesting. Like, the library burned as a casualty of war. In either case, the Great Library was oh, not completely library. destroyed. Right. Experts point out that its location was too far from the harbor, and much later texts refer to the Great Library as being intact. Hmm. Warehouses near the harbor contained manuscript copies awaiting export, and it is more likely that these documents were destroyed than the Great Library itself. Oh, that's interesting. So the documents got burned, not actually the library. This is the Library of Alexandria? This is their assumed Library of Alexandria? Let's check it out. That's so fascinating. Oh, so it's just like scrolls upon scrolls. This is pretty cool. This makes total sense. Yeah, I can see this happen. Oh, and they praise the god. Who's the god? Sheep. Is it... Um... Poseidon? No. Oh, that was it? Alright, cool. Yeah, it looks like a modern library of today. Except instead of books, it's like scrolls. Funny, we're just exercising the exact same things we've always been doing. Humans never change. Technology does. Okay, what else? Throw some history on me. What's that? Education and Alexandria. Ooh! Oh, I'll check this out. Yeah. Oh, okay, so... I mean, we, we, we get the gif, uh, gist. Um, 
Problem happen started with relationships, people, Welcome psychology, to blah, 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 blah. Education in Alexandria. Relationships. How are people educated? The education of young Alexandrians did not differ from the one generally dispensed elsewhere in ancient Greece. At the age of seven, the child was taken in charge by a tutor, who then became responsible for instilling an elementary education as well as good moral principles. Oh, cool, so like 101. That's cool, 101. Teaching was generally done outside, in the open air. Really? In the gymnasium, students were taught not only sports, but also topics such as rhetoric, philosophy, music, and poetry. All things deemed essential to one's education at the time. Sick. Okay. Science and art. Here, both girls and boys are shown attending a class given by one of the rhetoricians of the era. The team made the choice to show both genders attending class within the context of the game world. Even though it is historically inaccurate, the team felt it was not necessary to prioritize historical sexism over inclusive gameplay. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. SJWs at work. Okay, continue on Pharaohs now. Okay. That's cool. Alright. Maybe a couple more. That's pretty sick though. Education. Oh, here we go. Great library. This is what I was looking for. See slowly for as far as entertainment. Mm. Commercial hub. Economic. Mm. Yeah, I'll check that out. I love business. Oops. Just like today, I guess. From mud to brick. Hmm, okay. Start to war. Welcome to. The ports of Alexandria were a major commercial hub effectively connecting Egypt with the Mediterranean regions and beyond. Mm, makes sense. A tremendous amount of materials and goods flowed through the city on a daily basis. Makes sense. The large port market was called the Emporion. It was there that merchandise was traded by the ship owners, called Naklirum. Mm, okay. Food and other artisan work streamed out of Egypt. Ceramics, glass, golden rings, and minted coinage. The local potters, using traditional Egyptian techniques, competed with those from abroad, and the textile industry flourished. Makes sense. The wood imported to Port Mariotis through Alexandria's seaward ports was used in the nearby shipyards. So textiles, most of Egypt's food, ships were built. Wood. Makes sense. Employing tens of thousands of shipbuilders. Honestly, it's like today. Contributed to establishing the Egyptian fleet. We're still doing the same things. The southern port of Lake Mariotis was the biggest in Alexandria. Save for a branch angling westward, Oops. the lake's size in the Ptolemaic era was roughly 40 mm, Boring. Banking was one of the most distinctive innovations brought by the Greeks to Egypt. Really? The centerpiece I mean, of Alexandria's wealth was the royal systematization of taxes on almost mm. everything. Basic items that was the Romans. such as salt, oil, beer, Wheat and linen were heavily taxed. Yeah, because people use that stuff all the time. By the late 12th century, the channel feeding the lake from the Nile silted up. Lake Mariotis lost its connection to the Mediterranean, as well as most of its water, as the lake slowly evaporated to a fraction of its former size. How long would that take, In though? In modern times, Lake Mariotis is being kept alive through irrigation. However, only about 17% of its original size remains. Oh, that's intense. Okay. Uh, we'll 
I'll do... Great library. Oops. We all love this one. There can only be one. Hmm. Okay. All right. Boom. Welcome to the Great Library. Near the District of Royal Palaces and within the Moseon was the most famous library of all antiquity. The Library of Alexandria was built to house all of human knowledge. Ooh. At its pinnacle, the library was believed to contain over 700,000 parchments. That's cool. I like that. Throughout the centuries, fires and wars between Christianity and paganism destroyed the library, leaving nothing behind. The loss of the building, and more importantly, its vast collection is immeasurable. As no descriptions are available, the team's rendition of the Library of Alexandria was inspired by the visuals of the Library of Chalcis at Ephesus. Oh, okay, so this is not actually what it looked like. While much of the collection was purchased at the government's expense, the library also obtained books through other means. Any books owned by travelers coming through the city were seized to be copied what? for the library. Oh, copied. The copy would then be returned to the owner, and the original entered into the library's collection. Oh, that's sick. Huh, wow, they really, uh... Wanted a good library. Alexandria offered unrivaled oh, awesome. intellectual and cultural attractions. Eminent scholars from Athens, Rhodes, and other Greek centers traveled to the city to learn and engage with other free thinkers. Wow. Both the Moseon and the library were at the center of groundbreaking ideas and creative expression. Mm, that's cool. The great minds of antiquity were usually well versed in many disciplines which were often associated to specific schools of thought. The Peripatetics, the Stoics, and the Cynics were among the most well-known schools of the time. Oh, cynics. That's funny. It is clear that Alexandria lived up to its fundamental role as a city for intellectuals. Oh, dang. Hypatia of Alexandria was a Greek mathematician, philosopher, astronomer, and inventor. Though born in Greece, she eventually migrated to Alexandria like many great minds. That's boring. Callimachus was born in Cyrene oh, and educated okay. in Athens. After his studies, he moved to Alexandria to work in the great library. A poet and a critic, he strongly rejected the epic format of Homeric poems and instead fervently supported a shorter, more judiciously formulated style of poetry. His epigrams and elegiac poems were emulated by later poets. His work was extremely popular, second only to Homer's own works. It was in Alexandria that mathematician Euclid, the father of geometry, wrote the elements, laying out the foundational work of what would become modern algebra and number theory. Wow. Euclidean geometry would become one of the most influential systems in the evolution of mathematics. Let's go. Cool. How do you calculate the circumference of the Earth with a camel, two sticks, and shadows cast by the sun? No way. This is what Eratosthenes of Cyrene described in his principal work, Geography, while he was director of the Great Library of Alexandria. Huh. He is credited for the invention of the armillary sphere around 250 BCE. The earliest known and most complete armillary sphere of antiquity was the Meteoroscopion of Alexandria, with an imposing nine rings compared to the three or four of most other astrolabes. Mm. Known as the Zodiac Krikatoi amongst the Greeks, the Meteoroscopion was used to determine the location of celestial bodies around the Earth. Mm, makes sense. 
Pythagoras of Samos Ooh. was a well-known and respected philosopher and Pythagorean mathematician. Theme. He is theorem. best known for the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. However, there is proof that the theorem existed in Babylonia and India long before Pythagoras was born, casting some Ooh. doubts as to who exactly originated the theorem. Ooh, we stole it. That's what they're trying to say. Thief. Okay, I just want to check out that one thing. That was kind of cool. There's no more running. Can't run in the library. Was it this one? Talking about education? The great minds of antiquity yeah, were usually well versed in many disciplines, which were often associated to specific schools of thought. The Peripatetics, the Stoics, and take your time. I'll wait. What? It's not like ancient Egypt is going anywhere. Why does always do that? Okay. Man. So we found out that if you leave the area, they get cheesed. The great okay. minds of antiquity were usually well versed in many disciplines which were often associated to specific schools of thought. Hmm. The Peripatetics, the Stoics, and the Cynics were among the most well-known schools of the time. Different it is clear that Alexandria lived up to its fundamental role as a city for intellectuals, nurturing many great minds whose impact reverberates through our modern world. Oh, that was it? Oh, so I did finish it. Alright. Um... City of Celebration. I don't really care about that. Cyrus. Ooh, no way. Nice Asian teenagers. Hmm. Some specials. Building ancient Egypt. Workers and transport. Hmm. Um. Let's get animals. Oh, that's kind of cool. Egyptian medicine. I'll check that out. Um, pottery, beer and bread. Oh, what about the reduction steps? Nah. Oil. Okay, let's check out the medicine one. Let's see if they talk about like um, the blue lily, DMT. Uh, where is it? Oh god, did I that was it? Mummies. Whoops. Culture. Ooh, ancient Egypt fashions. There it is. Oops. That's so confusing. Square versus X. So not used to that. Ancient Egyptian men. Evidence of advanced medical procedures have been found on mummies, and ancient Egyptians left detailed medical writings from diagnosis to follow up treatment. Hmm. One of the oldest known surgical studies is the Edwin Smith papyrus. It's one of the first documents in history that notes. Yeah, that's boring. Another similar document, the Ebers medical papyrus. Is over 20 meters long and 30 Okay, so it's just long. about stuff that they found out about. Remedies were considered as medicine and carried by doctors and priests. Village doctors often had another job alongside their medical duties and the preparation huh. of medicines. A cure for blindness was Some made of fermented science. honey, ochre, and coal. The science behind it was that honey functioned as an antiseptic and antibacterial, while ochre would reduce the swelling. All of their knowledge did not always suffice. Ramses II died of an infection caused by an abscessed tooth. Ooh, that sucks. All right, so what we learned is medicine in ancient times sucks. Temples and priests. Oh, uh, pharaohs, priests. Mm, that's kind of cool. Rituals, importance of pharaohs. Mm. Nah. 
It's eating animals. Now let's see if it's actually cats. Yeah, so, um, I think I'll just give it a score right now before we, um, do maybe a couple more and then finish off. I would say, uh, I'd, I'd give this game a solid six or seven. It's not really a game, it's like an expansion pack or like a DLC. I, I would give this like, um, six or seven out of ten. Um... I would give it like a, if I was actually in the field, maybe like 8 or 9 out of 10, but uh, for the avid, average uh, consumer, I'd say this is like a um, 6 or 7 simply because, sorry the tour. Welcome um, to Domesticated Animals of Ancient Egypt. Interesting. So I, I'd say I'd give this like a 6 or 7 out of 10 from a, a novice perspective, but if you're actually educated in it, maybe you get higher, I don't really know. Um, it's pretty interactive, but I mean, the descriptions are kind of dry, which kind of sucks. And I don't like how if you accidentally walk into the next one, it starts the next one up. It's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, it's a good game. Uh, much better than the actual standard game. So if you're just looking for something cool and interactive to like jump into different realities, um, I, I would get this game simply for this function alone. Um, the story itself didn't seem too good. Like the actual story of the game, um, like it's, it's very bad, confusing, but um, can't say it's bad actually because I haven't actually played it. It's more confusing. It's like not put together well, but um, this function of the game is, is really sick. It's sort of like if you uh, you buy StarCraft, you don't actually play StarCraft for the story. You only play it for the online or Call of Duty for that matter. It's also like that. So. I definitely pick up this game just for this function because this is this is pretty legendary right here. Yeah, so uh, we'll continue. Agriculture and domesticated livestock were introduced 6,000 years ago. Archaeologists have found traces of cattle, donkeys, pigs, and dogs. Hmm. Dromedary are thought to have. See, like that. There you go. Pets Accidental. Were cherished in ancient Egypt. They should make it like you select Many it. illustrations of children often include a pet in the depiction. Well, that's cool. They have pets. Like my dog Athena. Greek. Greek mythology. They didn't put Greece in this game. It's a little... It's a little weird. One of ancient Egypt's most iconic animals, the cat, Hey. wasn't adopted into their daily life until the Middle Kingdom. Since they were so highly capable of killing snakes and rodents, cats were present throughout every period. Oh. However, they only became pets sometime during the Middle Kingdom. Prince that Thutmose, oh. son of Amenhotep III, had his cat Tamu laid to rest in its own sarcophagi. Wow. Loved his pet. Wow, that's interesting. So the reason why cats are so prevalent is because they can kill snakes and rodents easily. I like that. I learned something new every day. Didn't know that. The earliest reference to dogs dates back to 5000 BCE. They were popular pets as they helped hunters and protected herds. Oh, okay. They were closely linked to Anubis, the jackal-headed god. Baboons, monkeys, and even falcons were tamed as pets. Hmm. Each was mummified and buried with as much ceremony as any family member. Aww. Yeah, they love their pets. That was good. That was a good educational one. See, this, that's why this game exists, because you learn new things every day. Um, I think that's it for me for eating daily life. Um, for it's dogs. Hmm. Water management. Ooh, crucifixion. Very nice. Okay, I think we will end with Oh, actually, mm, forts. Do you want to do forts? Nah. Uh, do you want to do aqueducts? Sewage management? Nah, pass. All right, let's do, we'll end it off with the best ever. Crucifixion, if you're a uh, Catholic, you'll know. Just like I was brought up Catholic, you know. Let's change my clothes. I don't know what that is. Three's company. Hieroglyphs. Oh, cool. Whoa! Harlot Queen. Cleopatra was a sexual predator. Wait, what? When she met 
It just seemed like they had no sexuals. What? So it started with uh, Caesar. Crazy. There you go. Learn something new every day. Stop the tour. Welcome to Crucifixion. Oh, that's brutal. Look at this. Oh my goodness. In terms of the severity of Roman justice, crucifixion was at the top of the list of corporal punishment, followed by death by fire and decapitation. Ooh. Ooh. The upper class considered crucifixion unworthy of their position. Those lucky enough to have Roman citizenship were also exempt from such treatment. Oh. Oh, okay. So only the low class were crucified. Easily accessible, crucifixions were popular entertainment among the citizenry. What? Unlike throwing victims to wild animals, which required an arena, crucifixions did not require any particular setting. Wow, this is just like human cruelty at its finest. You know what's funny? Like, if you actually look at like, um, I'm best go all political, but like, if you look at like Syria and like Iraq and stuff, and we call them like animals and stuff, it's just like old thinking because look at this this is like animalistic right here like you could totally if if this was around during this time people would totally be like oh this is so animalistic it's barbaric but it's like dude it's just different different time frames like just because they haven't evolved um in terms of technology that's why they're like the way they are you know it's like this is just it's just humans being humans man those subjected to crucifixion were almost always slaves, traitors, and lower class citizens. In case only the worst Roman the deserters were crucified because the betrayal of the soldiers was perceived as endangering the lives of Roman citizens. It's like treason, yeah. Makes sense. This is craziness. Any time of Jesus. In 71 BCE, a major slave uprising in Italia was repressed by the Roman army. This resulted in the crucifixion of 6,000 men, including their leader, a slave and former gladiator known as Spartacus. Oh, just like the movie. Okay, that is where we'll end it uh, here. Um, this is our first impression of uh, the, the expansion of Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, again, 6 or 7 out of 10. We'll just make it a 6.5 because I can't decide between. No, we'll give it a 7. We'll be generous. It's a 7 out of 10. Uh, if you're actually in the field of history and you want to learn a bunch of stuff, um, I'd give it probably higher because you'd be more entertained with this. My kingdom uh, for a glass of water. Okay. For, for the average person, um, who said that? That's weird. Uh, not the voice in the head, but like the actual quote. Um, yeah, so this deserves like um seven simply because it's pretty awesome but it's dry uh it's pretty educational but like you do want to skip over some parts like the the pyramid stuff i thought it was gonna be really interesting but it was, that was super dry although i guess it's purely preference because i really liked the um the economic one like the alexandria ones when you find out about like how people lived and how it fell like behavioral stuff is really fascinating to me but yeah so pick this one up uh pick assassin's creed up origins um simply for this expansion or um just pass on it altogether i think this is totally worth it this right here is like yep this is totally worth the uh price and then if you want you can play the story later if you're into that kind of thing but just like starcraft it's like you don't really need the full game you just want it for that one feature call of duty 2 so it's not time. the heat that gets you. Well, it might, if the miles and miles of endless barren desert without water don't first. Huh. So until next time, um, don't be a lower class citizen or else you'll be crucified. Will that still happen today? Not in the same way. But you know what I'm trying to say. Take it easy.